Hazel Adams is my name. I am 30 years old and have worked for a trading company in New York ever since I graduated from college. David, my age-appropriate spouse, is a journalist with a publishing house account. Our paths crossed in the same college seminar. I wasn't really ambitious back then about my career, but David seemed so bright, chasing prospects and his ambitions. He frequently declared his desire to work as a reporter, seeking out tales for periodicals or newspapers. There was undoubtedly a spark in him. Over the course of two years, we had more chats because we saw one other frequently in the same center. We began dating because, by the time graduation drew near, I didn't want to break up with him. We shared a home for three years following graduation. Then, at 27, we formally announced it. But we didn't have a reception, a honeymoon, or even a wedding. Our folks weren't really happy about it either. However, David was unable to take longer vacation days than I could since he always put his work first, especially in times of crisis. What about the major events in life? What would happen if one of your family members suddenly suffered a loss? Do you think the same thing? Even after I made that statement, what topic are you discussing? Weddings are a question of personal preference, funerals are another. The stories I'm pursuing at the moment are very exciting. That defies argumentation. David's work was, after all, continuous and round the clock. He was so happy the year before we were married, I remember. As he was at last allocated to the weekly magazine he had always wanted to work for, specifically the editorial department. He works day and night and is busier than ever these days. Not just now though. His place was disorganized even before we moved in together and he only came home to sleep. We moved in together partly because I was sick of spending my weekends cleaning his apartment. Our new apartment's lease was chosen and signed by me. He didn't do much else, save from giving his preferences for size, location, and rent. We divide our living expenditures and rent equally. Sometimes he neglected to contribute. I finished the laundry and cleaning. We shared a home, but we didn't spend much time together. My desire to keep him around, even if it was simply a formality, was the primary driving force behind our official union. Maybe David didn't think a wedding ceremony was required. But even if it was only symbolic, I personally desired a celebration and a turning point. I proposed, at the very least, that we snap some pictures and spend a little honeymoon around the area. But all I'd have back was, why don't I just take photos? Why not take your buddies along on a trip if you're feeling adventurous? There isn't time for that. That's not right, would remark a lot of my college buddies who were in the same seminar. However, people who were aware of his work frequently retorted, it's unavoidable. It's been three years. It is now 30 years old. I want to talk to David about having kids, but we don't always have the same schedules, so it's difficult to find the proper time. Every day, all I do is dash between work and housework. I began to question why it was that we even got married. However, David stated this out of the blue one day. Hello, Hazel. I remember you saying you wanted to take a honeymoon, but you seem to be too busy. No, it appears that I will have some reasonable time off. If you want, we can leave. Really? You decide the rest. I'll pick the time. Although I was offended by his tone, I nonetheless wrote down the dates he provided. In a week, and summer will arrive. So I reasoned that perhaps somewhere colder would be nice, and I gave Alaska some contemplation. I visited the bookstore, took out a few trip guides, made notes about the sites I wanted to go, and showed David the maps. Please have a look at this. I come here in full. With a sweep of his hand, he dismissed me before I could ask where he wanted to go. You get to decide. Anything will do for me. Oh, I see. I had a strange feeling at the time. Given his hectic schedule, it could be unreasonable to have high expectations of David. However, this is meant to be our honeymoon. Our first significant achievement. I wanted to talk to him about the places and make a decision. Is it improper of me to have such hopes? Our lives seldom ever overlap, despite the years we've spent living together. When was the last meal that the two of us shared? It occurred to me that we didn't talk to each other very often. He frequently says things like, do you whatever you want, and I might let you handle it if you insist in response, even when I start a conversation. Actually, that's also how he's always approached chores. David used to say something like this to everyone when I was in college. Nowadays, spouses ought to work and divide domestic duties equally. Duties should be divided fairly. Are you certain you can manage that? I mean, I can cook. That impressed me a lot at the time. He was not an error. He eats out most of the time, but on occasion, he appears to make his own meals. Dishes I haven't used are frequently in the sink, yet I'm responsible for all other household tasks. I wind up doing everything cooking, cleaning, laundry, 
putting out the trash all by myself. David rarely returns home at the same time as me these days. We get to eat supper together once in a blue moon, which is a relief. Even so, he can't stop looking down at his phone that is resting on the table. After supper, he dashes to the living room and appears to be messaging someone on social media. I've been cleaning all along. One day I said, you seem awfully busy texting, a little offended by his lack of interest. I mean, I have professional relationships to maintain, unlike you. I doubt he was incorrect. He frequently leaves his smartphone unattended, by the way, as in while he's dozing off on the couch in the living room or having a bath. I happened to glance into it by accident. He was texting a female. Who is this individual? I pushed my smartphone screen in front of David, who had just woken up at that very time. Chloe Gigod's son was the name displayed on the screen. There were several messages from David's end with headings like, have you been? And have things been all right for you since then? Who? Yes, she has something to do with the case I'm working on right now. Is something wrong? Are you texting someone involved in the case on a daily basis? I mean, I have to be sincere if I have questions, right? However, doesn't it seem to irritate her? Do you object to the way I carry out my duties? When you brought up employment, I couldn't really argue but we should make a decision shortly. Given the case I'm working on, I might not be able to return until the very last minute. Will you please pack our bags? Yes, that had only happened a short while ago. The day of our journey eventually arrived. Unexpectedly, David, who had warned that he might not be home in time, got up early and was in a good mood. Then he added, setting a dish containing bread, bacon, eggs, and salad in front of me, I'm going to make breakfast. He also put down a pot of coffee, which was so unlike him that I started to get suspicious. Why is that look on you? When I make a decision, I follow through on it. Even though the meal consisted only of store-bought potato salad, overcooked bacon, and instant soup, there was no reason to make it look particularly noteworthy. I ate in silence, keeping those thoughts to myself. Your luggage is here. Thank you. It appears to have been well packed. Do you not intend to look inside? Later, I'll make sure. If you still indicate, we made a direct route to the airport. By the way, Alaska was listed as our destination on the tickets. Our itinerary called for seeing several regions of the state. After traveling by tram to the domestic terminal, we made our way to the boarding gate. Just as we got closer, David abruptly stopped moving. Hello, are you ready to board? I'm able to remove it fast. He grabbed the tickets from me as I started to remove the ticket holder, remarking, what a waste to travel with you. I had to bring someone else along. He then bolted in the direction of the boarding gate. Ahead of them stood a woman. It's the son of Chloe David. In his smartphone was an image. That is undoubtedly her. I saw that, gave myself a covert grin, and pulled out my own phone. So should we leave as scheduled? A few hours later, I was at an Alaskan airport terminal building. Heading directly for the domestic exit, he passed the well-known pastry shop in the second floor dessert corner. I was aware that David and Chloe were there in Eden's space. I sauntered in and came up to the two of them, who were savoring a sundae that was only available at the airport. With a little of ice cream lingering on the corner of his mouth, David, who had been staring dreamily at Chloe, suddenly paddled and looked at me as if he had seen a ghost. Hold on, Hazel, why are you here? Chloe leaped to her feet and flung herself at me. Hazel, I felt really afraid. I gave her shaking back a gentle stroke while glaring sharply at David. Why am I here, and what do you mean? How many flights from various carriers land there, do you know? I simply choose the first one. Are you a journalist for real? Not even understanding such a basic thing. That's right. David, how could you not even realize that? Which kind of writer are you? David appeared even more nervous as a deep male voice progressively grew closer to me from behind. Why? Why is the editor present? Here, let's not cause a ruckus. Come with me outside. That man was Mr. Editor. Gabriel, my husband's department's top editor. He and his wife had invited us to dinner to celebrate our marriage. We swapped numbers at that point, just in case. David shuddered when the charming Mr. Gabriel gripped his arm. Walking next to me, Flo wrapped her arm around mine as David watched utterly perplexed. David's hand would be tightly held back by Mr. Gabriel each time he attempted to approach Flo. David clicked his tongue in frustration, but we pretended not to notice. This is a less congested area. We made our way to a unique room we had rented earlier on the third level. Already inside, a man got to his feet and waved to us. Come on over here. David paused in his steps, his look changing to one of disbelief. Please tell me why you're stopping. Why is my dad there, Hazel? Since you abandoned me, 
I immediately extended an invitation to everyone. Why not turn it into a family outing? Yes, it is correct. You are to blame for believing you might embark on a honeymoon with a different woman. David was being dragged by Mr. Gabriel. It's all right. Chloe nodded as I muttered something to her. Mom and dad-in-law, I apologize for keeping you waiting. We succeeded in capturing David. Taken? Yes, I agree that a man who considers taking a second woman on a honeymoon ought to be apprehended. Even you mutter, and you father-in-law did all this with Hazel's money, didn't you? Sure, it wasn't limited to the in-laws. My parents were also present, and another man wearing glasses and a suit. Is this the girl in question then? You are who you are. I apologize for the delayed introduction. Yes, I am. He gave David his business card. An attorney? Why? David stated, in actuality, I got a request from Hazel and Chloe here. Did Hazel do it? What's more, Chloe? Why in the world? As he said this, David extended his hand to her. Chloe avoided his hand, though, and it missed. Put an end to it. Chloe? I apologize, Chloe. With your assistance, I was able to get her out here, but it appears that was my limit. No, I apologize. Is everything resolved if this happens? What topic are you discussing? Have you not been following Chloe around for a while? Are you implying that I've been pursuing her? Does that not make sense? No, it's not. I discussed the event from the other day with Chloe. So even though the story was finished after that was ended, you stayed in contact? You're meant to stay in touch with the folks involved in stories such as this. David received a head shake from Mr. Gabriel from above. I'm sorry, David's son of Ms. I instructed him to stop writing about the incident in which you were involved in any future articles. Yes, that is what I believed. Have a look at the messages I've been receiving from this individual. Everyone received printouts of the messages from the lawyer. What is this? I appreciate your cooperation. When would be a good time to grab dinner? Gabriel was the one you continued to invite even after she said no. It's just common courtesy, really. I was pulled to your fearless demeanor. What is the purpose of this? She was really quite courageous. She made a great effort to get better despite the situation. David bellowed in his father-in-law's voice. How in the world are you speaking? Attracted to her? I won't inquire about the details, Miss David's son, but I know you were harmed. Even still, it appears that while you were attempting to forget, this idiot kept bringing it up. Tears filled Chloe's eyes as she nodded. His pledge to write a proper account of the occurrence was the only reason I consented. Still, he was always thinking up excuses to ask me out afterwards, as well as the number of messages, and he is aware of my residence. Yes, it is correct. And there's this as well. The attorney distributed multiple photos. They displayed David standing in front of a window of a two-story apartment building with a camera. I reside in the flat. You were capable of this. Chloe shuddered again at that. I have my decision made. I will file a stalker report against him. What topic are you discussing? With the sound of a burst dam, Chloe started talking. What are you doing? He asks every single day. Is it possible for us to meet tomorrow? He knows about the incident, yet he still insists on talking about it even after I tell him there's nothing more to talk about. However, didn't you respond to my texts? Who do you think is having fun with this discussion? That's right. How are you today? Thank you for coming. What's beneficial when you're exhausted? A therapeutic massage. I'll drop by and offer you one at a later time. Right now, I'm busy. Things of those sort. And what's up with the eerie notifications asking whether you're in the bath? Flipping over the lengthy printout, I laughed. Yes, I am truly grateful for all that Hazel accomplished. She suggested that I document everything. Well, let's get going. Surely it must have been terrifying. To cope with someone who was saying such absurd things. Chloe shuddered. It was horrifying. How could those texts lead you to believe that I was interested in you? It was eerily disturbing. However, regarding our journey, that was your last blow. If not, I wouldn't have bothered to carry out this dreadful scheme. Dreadful scheme? You're not getting it still. I let have a long sigh. I believe that was my name on it. It's likely that he recognized it was related to the plane ticket. Yes, that's correct. How about it? Mr. Gabriel said quiet things. It is a felony, you know, if that is discovered. That's right. You won't be the one caught either. It's the one, he gave a gasp. He seems really oblivious. Mr. Gabriel placed his hands over his head. The ignorance of my subordinate amazes me. You as well. Give up. This will be used to take you to the Philippines. Mr. Gabriel then thrusts the ticket in David's face. How come? Why? There are several things to look at over there right now. Mr. Gabriel turned to Chlo, but you can refuse if you so choose. Indeed, 
I will report you to the police for stalking if you choose to remain in the nation, I understand. However, my passport and luggage are missing, the travel document. The travel document, right here. My turn came to give it to him. Yes, that's correct. Something significant is going on. Please sign before leaving. I signed the divorce papers and gave them to him. Divorce decrees. Are you also going to leave me? Oh, really? Are you saying this to your wife, who took such extreme measures to keep you from having a criminal record? Our house is managed by me. I gave a loud laugh, but my face quickly altered. How much of a proper married life we led in that house? Do you have any idea? We didn't spend much time together because I'm the one who works full time and takes care of the house. Furthermore, you hadn't recently paid the rent or contributed to our shared living expenses. Really? I make a good living from my employment. Yes, I am aware. I investigated the things you've been using it for. Similar to the upscale cameras in this residence, simply sign it. When he saw my rage, his face went ghostly pale. He returned the documents with a shaky signature. All good, do you have the remainder to do? I apologize for everything, mister. David was accompanied by Gabriel to the international flight counter. Rather than take the large lounge on the second story, we decided to settle on the third floor. Why? Since the international terminal of this airport is situated on the third floor. The idea was to just book him a ticket to Manila. It is not our concern what happens to him after that. I then relocated to a little apartment designed for single occupancy from the condo I had been living in. There are fewer rooms available and nothing unconnected to me is there. I can stop buying groceries for people whose return schedule I don't know. How simple housework is when I'm the only one doing it. I became aware of how much needless hardship I had endured while residing with David. My father-in-law paid for the moving costs. In addition, he paid David's unpaid rent and living expenses. My in-laws were such good people, bemoaning the fact that they had raised their son incorrectly. A month or so later, Mr. Gabriel called me. David was reportedly arrested after getting into some trouble abroad. Was there a crime of any kind? Actually, I'm not sure. Our editorial staff only instructed him to submit regular updates on the situation over there. They didn't ask him to become involved in any crimes or anything. I've heard a lot of different tales about how he was tricked or developed a gambling addiction, and we might allow him to come back if he could get a major scoop. From what Mr. Gabriel hinted to, it appears that David became overly ambitious and ultimately destroyed himself. I haven't heard any stories about him returning since then. Come on, Hazel. Chloe waved to me at the cafe where we had made plans to meet. I hurried over to her table. I apologize for the wait. Ready? Indeed. What say you, Hazel? See. Si. I showed her the concert items we were going to see. We exchanged a happy grin, grabbed a quick cup of coffee, and made our way to the location. We hit it off when we were discussing David's problem, and I discovered that Chloe and I were both fans of the same band. After all was said and done, we were going to a concert together. Gabriel had been waiting for this day. Due to David and my competing schedules, I had forgotten about these pleasures after being married. I can now spend time alone myself with friends who have similar interests. Oh, I'm so happy I took that choice at the time.